This video is going to teach you the basics of analysis of variance, otherwise known as ANOVA. Here's the example we're going to work with throughout this video. Suppose we want to compare the monthly rent for a one-bedroom apartment in three Pennsylvania cities, Pittsburgh, State College, and Philadelphia. We want to know if the main monthly rent costs are the same in these three cities, or if there exists some difference between them. The problem that we have here is that we're comparing three populations, and we don't yet have a procedure that can compare more than two populations. This is where analysis of variance, or ANOVA, comes in. ANOVA is a statistical method that compares the means of more than two populations, where the possible conclusions that you can come to are that all population means are equal to one another, or at least two of the population means are significantly different. Let's take a look at the data and some box plots to get a feel for the information that we're working with. Over on the left, we have 15 observations, five from each of the three cities. Notice that in Pittsburgh, the minimum rent was 483, with a maximum of 729. In State College, the rent costs range from 747 to 1009. And in Philadelphia, the minimum was 930, and the maximum was 1160. Taking a look at the box plots on the right, we can clearly see that the observations in Pittsburgh are much lower than those in State College and Philadelphia. The observations in State College are less than those in Philadelphia, but there's a little bit more overlap in the box plots than either of these two have with Pittsburgh. Now, while this is a nice descriptive measure, we need a way of formally testing this. Suppose we're comparing the means of K populations. Then the null hypothesis for the ANOVA is that all of the means are equal to one another. The null hypothesis says mu1 is equal to mu2, which is equal to mu3, which is equal to every other mean up through mu k. The alternative hypothesis says that at least two means are different. Notice the form of the alternative hypothesis, though. The alternative hypothesis just says that at least two means are different. One problem with the ANOVA is that ANOVA cannot tell us specifically which means are different. ANOVA can only tell us that there is some difference between at least two of the means. We'll encounter a procedure later on in the course that it will tell us specifically which means are different, but for right now, ANOVA can only tell us that at least two means are different. One other note is that ANOVA tests are typically done using a 5% level of significance. So going back to our example of comparing the rent costs in Pittsburgh State College in Philadelphia, the first thing we need to do is set up the hypotheses. Since we're comparing three populations, we're going to have three population means reflected in the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis says that the mean rent cost in Pittsburgh is equal to the mean rent cost in State College, which is also equal to the mean rent cost in Philadelphia. The alternative hypothesis is going to say that the mean rent is different in at least two of these three cities. We don't know which cities it would be different in. We don't know how many cities there would be a significant difference. All we would be able to determine from the ANOVA is that at least two of these three cities have different mean rent costs. Now, performing the analysis for an ANOVA is a little bit complicated. It takes a little bit of work to ultimately get to our final result. ANOVA compares group means by comparing the amount of variation between groups with the amount of variation within groups. So it turns out that even though we're looking to compare group means, we're actually using variances to calculate our test statistic. The between group variation measures the amount of variation between the means of individual groups. So basically, we're asking how different are the sample means from one another. We can take the sample means from each of our individual groups, and we basically look at the variance between the sample means. The within-group variation measures the amount of variation that exists within the samples. So we take a look at an individual sample, and we ask how different are the observations from one another within each individual sample. We'll compare the between-group variation to the within-group variation to calculate our test statistic in the end. The between-group variation is denoted SST for sums of squares due to the treatment, 
and is calculated as follows. For each group, we take the sample size and we multiply it by the square difference between the sample mean for the observations from the group and the grand mean, x double bar. The grand mean is the mean of all observations regardless of the population that they came from. Basically, we sum every observation ignoring the group that it was sampled from and divide by the total number of observations sampled. We repeat this process for each population that we're comparing and add all of the terms together to calculate the between group variation. Keep in mind the between group variation measures how different the sample means are. The within group variation, denoted SSE for sums of squares due to the error, is calculated similarly. We take the sample size from each group, subtract 1, and multiply by the sample variance from the group. Repeat this process for each group and sum the terms to calculate the within group variation. Again, the within group variation measures how much variability there is within observations that are coming from the same population. Taking a look at our data, we can calculate the three sample statistics that we'll need in order to work through the between group and within group variation. The table on the right summarizes all of the statistics. The mean rent cost in Pittsburgh is $619, State College averages $849, and Philadelphia averaged $1,037. The sample variance in Pittsburgh, $8,158. State College is 10,794, and the sample variance in Philadelphia is 8,420. Each of the five cities had five apartments sampled, so the sample size is five for each of the three groups. The last thing we need to calculate is the grand mean. Adding up all 15 observations from the table on the left gives us 12,525. Since we have a total of 15 observations and we're ignoring the population that they were sampled from in order to calculate the grand mean, we'll divide 12,525 by 15 to get a grand mean of $835. The first step in performing an ANOVA test is to calculate the between group variation, the SST. There's going to be three different terms involved in calculating the SST because we have three different populations we're comparing. The first term in the SST is going to involve Pittsburgh. We take the sample size, 5, and multiply by the sample mean, 619, minus the grand mean of 835, squared. The second term is going to involve State College. Again, the sample size is 5, but now our sample mean is 849. So we take 5 times the quantity 849 minus 835 squared. And the final term in the SST is going to involve Philadelphia. We have the same sample size of 5, but our sample mean is now 1037. So we take 5 times 1037 minus 835 squared. The first term, when worked out, gives us 233,280. The second term, involving State College, is only 980, and the third term involving Philadelphia is 204,020. Adding all of these together gives us a final SST, or a final between group variation, of 438,280. The next step in the ANOVA is to calculate the within group variation, or the SSE. The sums of squares due to the error is also going to have three different terms. The first term involving Pittsburgh is the sample size 5 minus 1 times the sample variance 8,158. We repeat this process for State College. The second term, again 5 minus 1, the sample size is 5, times the sample variance 10,794. And the third term involving Philadelphia, we again have 5 minus 1 since the sample size is 5, times the sample variance of 8,420. Working each of these terms out gives us 32,632 for Pittsburgh, 43,176 for State College, and 33,680 for Philadelphia. The sum of these three terms is 109,488. 
At this point, we have all of the information that we need to construct the test statistic. Let's let k be the number of group means that we're comparing, and let's let n be the total number of observations from all samples, the sum of the individual sample sizes from our individual populations. Then the mean squared treatment, denoted MST, is going to be the sums of squares due to the treatment, SST, divided by k minus 1. The mean squared error, or the MSE, is going to be the SSE, sums of squares due to the error, divided by n minus k. The test statistic for the ANOVA follows an F distribution, and it's equal to the MST divided by the MSE. If you recall, the F statistic has two parameters for the degrees of freedom. This is going to have k minus 1 degrees of freedom in the numerator and n minus k degrees of freedom in the denominator. Now, there are many different scenarios that could play out with this F statistic, but here are the two most extreme examples. We may have a scenario where the SST is large and the SSE is small. As you can see in the plots on the right, Sample means are far away from one another, and the individual plots do not have much variability. So we have a large amount of between-group variation since the sample means are very different, and a small amount of within-group variation since the individual variability within each group is small. This will lead to a large test statistic, which will likely imply that the means are probably different. On the other hand, we could have a situation where the SST is small and the SSE is large. This means that there is not much variability between group means, but there is a lot of variability within each sample. This will lead to a small test statistic where we will likely conclude that the means are not different from one another. The takeaway here is that large between group variation likely implies that the means are different, while a large within group variation likely implies that there is no significant difference in the population means. Let's go through and calculate the MST, the MSE, and finally our F statistic. The MST is equal to the SST divided by K minus 1, which is 438,280, divided by 3 minus 1, 3 being the number of groups. This gives us 219,140 for the MST. The MSE, calculated similarly, is the SSE divided by n minus k. The SSE was 109,488. n was equal to 15. We had a total of 15 observations altogether. And k is equal to 3. So 109,488 divided by 12 is 9,124. And finally, our F statistic is the ratio of the MST and the MSE. Our F statistic is 219,140 divided by 9,124, which is 24.018. The degrees of freedom here are K minus 1 in the numerator, 3 minus 1 gives us 2, and N minus K in the denominator, N minus K is 15 minus 3, which is 12. And so to finish off this hypothesis test, we need to go through and calculate the p-value, make a decision, and come to a conclusion. We'll use Excel to calculate the p-value for the ANOVA test. Our p-value here is 0 0.0001. Since we typically do ANOVA tests at the 5% level of significance, we'll reject the null hypothesis since our p-value is less than 0.05. And finally, we'll conclude that the mean cost for rent is different in at least two of the three cities. Again, just to reiterate the conclusion, we don't know which cities differ. We don't know how many of the three cities have different means. All that we can conclude with the ANOVA is that the mean cost for rent is different in at least two of these three cities, Pittsburgh, State College, and Philadelphia.